How often did you make this trip? One week, at least three times. Did you dread it or look forward to it? I look forward to it because I tell myself, I have to be strong. No matter how, I must have a positive thinking. I go there, I know it will be success. Six years ago, Liu Lingling would make this journey between Singapore and Malaysia every single week for six months. She wasn't going there for work or shopping. Hi, Dana, this is the place I meet my baby. <laughs> Okay, it sure doesn't look like it from the facade, but let's go check it out. Come okay, on. let's go. Liu Lingling, a Gertai celebrity and actress, made headlines in 2013 for being pregnant at 50. Today, she is taking me to where her IVF journey began. How did you decide on the clinic? The clinic here is the most popular in the town. They do so many cases successfully. The nurse also tell me, I have a lot of Singaporeans do their baby here. Not only here uh, got IVF, outside also a lot of IVF in the town. In this episode, I want to find out why Singaporeans like Ling Ling are crossing the causeway for IVF treatments. I am surprised to see so many fertility clinics concentrated just 10 minutes from the Woodlands checkpoint. We've been told that Ling Ling's doctor has moved to this building, and this is the first time they're meeting since she successfully conceived six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Is, yeah, I'm good. You, because you give me a baby, he's a very <laughs> good doctor. It's not giving me a baby. Yeah, I know. It's you're not... sounding like he's the father of your child. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to see you. Come, it's just yeah, see your, my baby, you see. Oh, he's so tall. Yeah, he's funny. He likes to do funny things. He, he... Oh, slim and fit. La. Slim and fit. La. Yeah, slim and fit. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I'm I very thankful, really. Oh, uh, uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. You know, my a uh, lot of friends say, well, once you have baby come out, you are my idol. <laughs> we shouldn't give up, you know. So, what you think? 50 years old, now still have 50 I mean, years everybody old? Everybody must try, must try something. Ling Ling sought treatment in JB six years ago. Her journey here was out of sheer desperation because Ling Ling was unable to receive IVF treatment in Singapore due to her age. Before 45, I do it in Singapore. Not successful. So after 45, I can't. Even the doctor tell me, you can't do it in Singapore. You have to do it in Malaysia. When the doctor first told you that you had to come to JB for yes. fertility treatments, what was the first reaction? You feel lost because you don't know where to go and you don't know about the doctor here. You don't know whether it's safe of not. What other attraction did JB have for you? The price. In Singapore, I go and find it out. Uh, they need 40000 How does it compare to JB? What is the cost like? Less than 50% at least. An IVF treatment in Singapore costs around $2,000 per cycle at public hospitals. But that's only if you are below 40, because the government covers up to 75% of the cost. If you are above 40, it would cost between 10,000 and 15,000 Singapore dollars without the subsidies. In comparison, IVF treatment in JB costs only about 5 to 7,000 Sing dollars per cycle. No wonder the cost is more attractive to women above 40. We reached out to the fertility clinics to share more about their treatments and patients, but they all turned us down, citing privacy reasons. However, two of the clinics did share with me that the majority of their patients come from Singapore. I'm soon to find out that cost and age aren't the only reasons women are headed to JB. Yes, the features inside. Oh, yeah. Dr. Anne Tan is one of Singapore's most well-known fertility doctors, and she has been fighting to change Singapore's regulations on fertility treatment. 
What is available in JB that Singaporeans can't find here? The ability to test the embryos prior to transferring back into the woman. So this previously was known as pre-implantation genetic screening. So for example, a woman who is who's tried IVF perhaps a few times and has failed. So she goes across because she wants to do an IVF procedure where she can actually screen the embryo to find out whether it's going to be a normal embryo. During IVF treatment, multiple eggs are harvested from a woman. Sperms fertilize the eggs to form embryos, and one or two of these embryos are implanted into the uterus. If these embryos have any chromosomal or DNA defects, which is common in older women, the pregnancy would most likely fail. However, pre-implantation genetic screening, or PGS, boosts success rates to 70%. That's because all the embryos are screened, ensuring only healthy ones are implanted. Is Singapore losing patients because we cannot give pre-implantation testing? They can join in the trial, however, it's not easily available and some cannot wait in line for it and that's why they are running elsewhere to the various centres in the surrounding countries where it's easily available. We are definitely losing some patients because of this, especially the women who are older. So, JB isn't just an option for women trying to circumvent the age limit in Singapore. It also offers PGS, which increases the chance of an IVF success. But even with PGS, is IVF a sure guarantee? Fertility clinics, whether in Singapore or overseas, seem to boast high success rates for a growing number of older women. But are they too good to be true? In fact, if 10 patients see me, probably only three to four of them will walk home with the baby. Time is not on our side. Like many Singaporean women, I got married in my 30s. And as our fertility decreases with age, reproductive treatments like IVF are becoming a popular option. Online, I found this community of women who call themselves the hashtag IVF sisters. And I'm meeting two of them today. They turned to IVF not because of age, but because of medical reasons. Rohaida went through three failed pregnancies before choosing IVF at age 29. Suwen chose IVF at the age of 28 due to complications with an ovarian cyst. She went through three cycles of IVF before successfully conceiving. So, and you had five transfers before a successful pregnancy. Mm -hmm. How did you feel after the first failure? Because I was relatively young back then, I was only 28 when I started trying um, IVF. I blamed myself, like, you know, I really felt very down. It actually got worse. I thought that, you know, after this, uh, maybe the second time will be better, the third time will be better, but every time when I go through it again, after the, every failure, right, I really didn't want to, like, meet anybody. Rohaida, on the other hand, successfully conceived after just one IVF treatment. But her pregnancy wasn't easy, as she was threatened with a miscarriage during her first trimester. I just told myself that I had to take it day by day. Yeah, because even my gynae prepared me for the worst, that even though it was a successful pregnancy, it still remained a threatened miscarriage. And um, I was only out of the um, danger zone um, when it stopped bleeding fi finally before its 12th week. So when you brought something to show yes, us? Yes, correct. I actually went, brought the uh, ninos that I went through, I kept them as like so-called souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> to remind me what I went through. Actually, there's a lot more inside. So these are the syringes yes. uh, for injections? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which you self-inject? Yes. Yes. Okay. So every morning, right, um, of course you need to sterilise your stomach. Okay. Okay. Then after that, you pinch your, your stomach, your tummy, and then you poke this in and, and then you, yeah. Inject it in. in, in. This is really painful. 
And I thought it would get easier, you know, after like going through it for months. But the thing is when your stomach starts expanding during pregnancy. Ouch. Yeah, it's really, it, you can't pinch anywhere else. Yeah. Despite the pain these women went through, both Suen and Rohaida were rewarded with successful pregnancies. But not every woman is so lucky. Felicia Tan went through three cycles of IVF over three years. It cost her over $60,000. And even though she did get pregnant twice, her babies didn't survive. Tell me about the first time when you lost baby. I was 23 weeks pregnant when my water bag suddenly broke. And in a &E, I was told the news that the baby's boy had already protruded out, preventing the water bag from healing naturally. Um, sadly, of course, two weeks later, the baby's position descended and we were forced to deliver him alive. So he was born alive, but um, his heartbeat quickly dropped and therefore we lost him within minutes or so. How did you cope with it and how did you get yourself through that period? Every night I'll be crying, asking what wrong, what went wrong. Scanning through portals, motherhood forums, trying to find answers. After that, you didn't give up. You continued to go for IVF treatments. Tell me about that. So after the first IVF and miscarriages, we were told that the next few months we were very fertile. So that was why two, three months later, we thought we were ready and we decided to do for another round of IVF. Uh, this time was a frozen cycle, but we, we didn't conceive. A few months later, we tried again. And that was when I conceived with twins but only to end up with miscarriage again. Didn't even have to push hard and the first twin just came. We were hoping to hope the second twin, but he just came right through shortly after. So the delivery came so quick that I delivered in a forum ward. So there was a lot of pain and hurt and more guilt. So as parents, we are very helpless to see the child grasping for air, but no one can do anything. Let me say for the record that no woman should go through what you did and that is to give birth to three children and then watch them die. Yeah? Subsequently, you conceived naturally. When you first saw Titus after you gave birth to him, what was the first thing that came to your mind? I told my husband, congratulations, so now you're officially a father. Finally, it is the baby crying, not us. Felicia's story is heartbreaking, but I'm so happy for her that it has a happy ending. What these women have shown me is that having a baby through IVF is no easy feat. And sometimes the setbacks can be traumatic. Yet, pictures like these make the IVF process look simple. And fertility clinics continue to boast high success rates on their websites. This one says that the success rate for women above 40 years old is a whopping 48%. Wow! Clinics are reporting different success rates and they all seem surprisingly high. I'm headed to one of the most established fertility centres in Singapore to find out how accurate those stats are. There are multiple ways of looking at the statistics of each clinic. It could be they're talking about just the clinical pregnancy rates, or it could be they're talking about their live birth rates. Ultimately, what we all want is a child. And Why does a pregnancy not always result in a live birth? IVF pregnancies are a bit more challenging. So these women intrinsically have a higher rate of having probably abnormal babies. They're more prone for miscarriages. Um, they're more prone for preterm births. And if they are older, they might have other associated complications of pregnancy like high blood pressure, like diabetes. There's a lot Multiple of challenges. Correct. Another thing which you would have to interpret, what is the age of the women they cater to? Some of them might cater to much younger women when the pregnancy rates are much better. So unless the public is discerning and fully looks in detail at how a clinic puts up its statistics, it's easy to be mistaken. Generally, do you think patients feel that as long as I try IVF, I will walk out of the hospital with a baby 10, 9 months later? A lot of patients do come with these expectations. Unfortunately, it does not translate to this. In fact, if 10 patients see me, probably only 3 to 4 of them will walk home with the baby. 
over 40, probably going to be one or two out of 10. So according to Dr. Hema, the chances of a live birth for a woman below 40 is less than half. And for those over 40, it's one out of 10. Compare this to the stats I saw earlier. It's such promises that could cause women desperate for a child to suffer from unnecessary heartbreak. It's clear that women longing for a child will go to great lengths to conceive. I'm really not getting young anymore. I can't wait another two, three years to freeze my eggs. Singapore's fertility rates are at rock bottom. At 1.14, it's the lowest figure ever recorded. In fact, globally, we are among the bottom-ranked countries. As the biological clock for many Singapore women ticks away, some are banking on science to buy time for their fertility. Egg freezing has become a highly sought-after procedure, especially by women who are looking to progress in their career while planning for a family later in life. But in Singapore, only women with medical grounds are allowed to freeze their eggs. Rubina Tiu has been deliberating about freezing her eggs since she hit her mid-30s. She's finally decided to set up an appointment with a fertility doctor to explore the options. And I've asked to tag along. How young are you? I'm 36 this year. Okay, you're in a relationship? No. Okay, so you are thinking of egg freezing because... Well, a few reasons. Mm. One reason being the fact that I'm not young. And also, I don't know when I'm going to meet a partner and all that. Mm. And so, and work's crazy busy, the stress doesn't okay. help. So, a lot of factors. Okay. People actually freeze their eggs overseas. Countries like Thailand, countries like Malaysia and Australia and UK, okay. they have very well established egg freezing programs. The eggs are being kept at that, that country. Center. Yeah. I do have a question, what if that place closed down? <laughs> You're right. The place where you put your eggs, is it secure? Yeah. Uh, it's a big question mark. And how long do you keep your eggs? Do you know that in the UK, they're actually starting a legal fight to extend the 10-year limit to beyond? So it's only 10 years? That's right. Unless you can prove that you are actually having premature ovarian failure. That means you can't produce any more eggs. eggs. Okay. What is your sense of why younger women are wanting to freeze their eggs? I think very important is that the medical technology has reached a pinnacle where it's actually safe and it's robust enough to say, I promise you that if I were to freeze your eggs, it's going to be as good as having fresh eggs from you. Rubina represents a growing number of women who believe that egg freezing is a reproductive right. But does it offer women a false sense of security about their fertility? Dr. Vu Tik Chuan is a medical ethics researcher whose work involves examining the social and moral aspects of reproductive technologies like egg freezing. More women are freezing their eggs. How realistic is that? Well, I think women have to consider two things. The first is, what are the odds of using those eggs for reproduction in the future? So there's a credible study done last year that shows that less than 10% of women use their eggs after freezing them. Should a woman decide to use her frozen eggs to try for a baby, what are some of the challenges? Can you tell me? If you were to choose to use those eggs, there are multiple failure points you have to consider. Uh, so there's the risk of losing the eggs through the process of thawing. Uh, you may not get a suitable viable embryo for implantation. You have to undergo the procedure of IVF, which is not an efficient system to, to say you might fail to get pregnant, and after you get pregnant, you might not, uh, it might not result in a live birth. So very much like natural pregnancy, as you know, in the first trimester, there's a risk of miscarriage, and this increases for older women. This begs the question, is egg freezing a waste of money? Well, that's one perspective. Women have a strong desire to have their own biological child. So whether it's a waste of money has to be answered from each person's life circumstances, their age, their resources, uh, the understanding of the whole process. 
the downsides and so forth. So at the heart of your question, I suppose it's an ethical one. To what extent are women informed about the whole uh, procedure? Earlier, I met Liu Lingling, a first-time mum at 50. Lingling is a successful IVF story. The ethical issue I grappled with, is being a parent at such a late age really a good idea? Then this one is uh, before I, I went to hospital. This is before you went for your C-section? Mm, yeah. When the news of the birth of Xiang Xiang, your son, yeah. uh, broke out, yeah. people had a lot to say. Uh, and I'm sure not all of it was positive or encouraging. What was the nastiest thing that people you heard? You're so selfish, no? You, 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 think, you think you're so old, you still want to have a baby. When you, the son grow up, they need your love, you're really not there. Do you think it's selfish? Mm, half. Because I think I want him to accompany me. Is motherhood proving to be more challenging than you initially thought? Yes, definitely. You know when when Xiao Xiang know how to climb, uh, then you know in the living room, you know those uh, uh, walker because my leg a problem, so he can't climb so fast no <laughs> to death. So I know the walker is going to rip over. And, and you saw him fall. Yes. Then he cry. <laughs> he cry. <laughs> then slowly, I know, I go and carry him and love him. Mm. No, this is, is a very challenge. At the end of the day, has it been worth it? Yes. Very, very, very worth it. Because one day my my son kind of tell me, kiss me, hugs me. He tell me. Mm, Mama, you are the best mother in the world. <laughs> you know, the kind of love uh, is totally... You know, when you kiss him uh, or kiss her, it's totally different when husband kiss you, the kind of feeling <laughs> is totally different. Social egg freezing, IVF treatment for women above 45 years old. Currently, these aren't allowed in Singapore. The thinking behind it is, it's better to start a family earlier rather than later. But considering our dismal birth rate of 1.14, some might suggest that it's time to make the law more lax. But even then, the road to assisted reproduction is paved with challenges.